Before we continue with Hannibal's journey, we have a recommendation for the fans of the channel. For those of you who would like to create a history website, look no further than Zyro, a new powerful tool that will help you set up your online presence in less than an hour without any coding or design skills. It's so easy, even your cat could do it. Just use one of many beautiful and quick-to-load designer-made templates and let Zyro's powerful AI features pretty much do everything for you so that you can focus on creating and sharing your history stories online. And for any questions, their support is available 24-7. Click on the link in the description and sign up for free to test out Zyro's powerful features. And use my promo code to get a 30% special discount for all Zyro website builder plans. Just as the sun rose over the plain beneath Geronium, the guards woke up Minutius. Hannibal was just outside the camp. For the second time, Hannibal positioned himself on the ridge, from where he could observe all activities in the Roman camp. Minutius was not about to allow him to control the engagement. The Romans advanced confidently, having previously driven Hannibal back from the same ridge and forced him to retreat to his main camp. Minutius was now determined to finish the job. But this time, Hannibal was ready. As the Roman light infantry crashed into the Carthaginian line, it seemed like their push will again drive back the enemy. But just as his men began giving ground, Hannibal reinforced the line with troops hiding just beyond the ridge. Minutius responded by sending the Roman and allied cavalry up the hill. From his vantage point, it seems that the Carthaginians have just about enough men to hold off his light infantry, and he was determined to break the stalemate. But as the Roman cavalry closed in, Hannibal called upon his Numidian and Spanish riders, who poured over the ridge. What seemed until now like another skirmish turned into a proper battle. Outnumbered, the Roman line quickly lost ground and was pushed back down the hill. With his cavalry fully engaged, Minutius was now unable to scout the battlefield for potential ambushes. Nevertheless, he ordered his legions forward, fearing that his troops in the front will get overrun. However, what the Roman general didn't realize is that he was sending his men straight into a trap. During the previous night, Hannibal led 5,000 Libyans and up to 1,000 cavalry, dispersing his men in groups of two to 300, ordering them to conceal themselves in the ravines, hollows, stream beds and tree lines to the north and south of the ridge. The skill and discipline of Hannibal's troops was evident in the flawless execution of this potentially dangerous operation. And now, as Minutius' heavy infantry advanced up the hill, they collided with the overwhelmed Roman cavalry and light infantry, losing their cohesion. At that moment, Hannibal signaled his concealed troops to attack. From the mountain slopes across the river to the north and the ravines to the south, Libyan infantry and cavalry leapt forward. Some three kilometers away, Fabius could see that another disaster was looming. Left with no choice but to help the embattled troops, he ordered his men forward. Back in the valley, thousands of Roman troops were being mauled in yet another perfectly executed ambush. 
the sequence and timing of events over the past 24 hours, all planned and orchestrated by Hannibal so as to lure Minuchus into sending his cavalry early on in the battle, thereby depriving him of the ability to scout the vast battlefield, which prevented him from discovering the hidden Carthaginian troops, ultimately resulting in his entire army being ambushed. By now, many Romans gave up and fled, fearing another full encirclement. Seeing Fabius marching down towards the valley, Hannibal reportedly said, That cloud on the mountains has broken into a storm at last. Finishing off those who weren't able to escape, Hannibal ordered his troops not to pursue, turning his army back towards the main camp. He did not want a battle of attrition against a numerically superior enemy, half of which were rested troops, while his own troops grew tired after hours of fighting. Having defeated the Romans yet again, Hannibal began settling in for the winter at Geronium. Meanwhile, the humiliated Minuchus returned supreme command to Fabius, hailing him as his father as a show of respect. Fabius, for his part, reinstated Minuchus as his second in command, treating him with utmost consideration. As the year drew to a close, the Roman army stayed at a respectful distance from the Carthaginians, though sporadic skirmishes between scouting parties and foragers continued throughout the winter. Meanwhile in Spain, the Roman strategy of putting more pressure on Carthage continued, as the Scipio brothers pushed south of the Ebro for the first time, successfully persuading a handful of Iberian tribes to join the Roman cause. This caused grave concern for the Carthaginian authorities, who sought to restore their popularity with the tribes by organizing the return of the hostage children belonging to the tribal nobility, until now held at Saguntum to keep the Iberians loyal. The Punic commander of the city entrusted an influential Iberian noble, Abelox, with returning the hostage children to their parents. However, in a stroke of luck for the Romans, Abelox instead brought the children to them as gifts and was handsomely rewarded. The Scipio brothers subsequently took it upon themselves to return the children to several tribal leaders, taking credit for their rescue. This resulted in massive support for the Roman cause from the Iberian tribes between Saguntum and the Ebro. Back in Italy, Fabius's six-month term expired, and the Senate did not renew his dictatorial powers, giving temporary command to consuls Servilus Geminus and Marcus Attilus Regulus until the following elections resumed in just a few months' time. And now, as the year 216 BC rolled around, a Roman army of unprecedented size was being raised, as the Senate prepared to mount a major effort to engage and destroy Hannibal once and for all. Credit goes to our awesome patrons who make videos like this one possible. Consider joining them to support our work. You can also support us by subscribing to our channel and clicking the bell button to get notified when our new videos are released. And as always, thank you for watching.